Hey guys, how's it going? So I just got my hands on the most glorious load of caladiums yesterday. I have six different varieties that I want to show you, three of which we've grown personally in our own garden. And I'm just really excited to have these plants because we've been slowly transitioning the decor in our house from fall to Christmas. And because most of these caladiums fall within the green, red, and white family in that category, they just slide right into my Christmas decorating just perfectly. And I think that they're going to be a really fun alternative to the poinsettia, something a little bit different and possibly even easier to care for. And I'm going to go over kind of what I feel like the differences are here in a minute. Um, but I feel like caladiums have been one of those things for us here, you know, gardening in a cold northern climate. We're also high desert, no humidity, very um, little cloud cover, intense sun. Caladiums haven't been a huge plant for us up here um, traditionally. But with some of these brand new varieties, they have been bred to withstand a lot more adversity in the garden, a lot more sun, um, and we have experienced that. So this past year, we had a full season of growing experience with some of these varieties, some of which were in full afternoon sun and they did fantastic. I feel like as so long as they have a good source of water and they're put in you know appropriate light, then they're just gonna flourish for you. I mean, the one variety that I kind of questioned this year, which is probably one of my favorites is Chinook. It's a salmon pink with a green edge. Uh, Aaron and I planted, what do you think? Close to a hundred of them <laughs> in one spot this last year. And at the very end, there still are some varieties like Chinook that do wanna be in a slightly shadier position. We got it done and then Aaron said to me, you realize that this variety kind of wants a little bit more shade, right? And I just, I had this stomach drop moment. Like we just did all of this work. Aaron used the auger for all the holes and I just put him in a spot that gets full afternoon sun. And I thought, well, it, we're too far in now. Let's just leave them here and see what happens. They were fed by a drip tube. So they got um, water from like at the root zone. And then they also got overspray from the sprinklers. And I think because they got twice a day watering almost, um, and I think that just kind of keeps the general humidity maybe in that vicinity a little bit higher. Those plants did so fantastic. They bulked up and they were gorgeous. And I had them backed by Icicles Helichrysum. So we had that icy blue with the salmon pink in front. It was just a glorious show. So it was very encouraging to see caladiums, which traditionally haven't done very well for us, just really thrive. Um, this variety is called Fast Flash. And I had this planted underneath our crab apple up, up front. Same story for these. They were in afternoon sun, did really, really well. So the reason why I even have all these caladiums is that Proven Winners, which all these varieties are Proven Winners varieties, they got with a grower who's just a couple hours away from us in Jerome, Idaho. Uh, it's called Moss Greenhouses, who has been supplying my parents' garden center for years and years. They do a fantastic job growing things. Um, but they have been trialing these plants. Like they have really, you can tell that the person in charge of this project has a passion for it because I would mean, look at these plants. I mean, when they dropped these by, I was just floored with how full and gorgeous they are. And because they are growing in such a similar climate to where I'm gardening, I feel like I'm gonna be able to soak in a lot of um, knowledge from them in terms of care for these plants because you know they don't survive our winters here we have to either dig the bulbs which in northern climates it's hit and miss success rate uh, because they can't stay in the ground for long enough to really charge themselves up for the next year um, like they can in maybe a little bit more mild climates but if we dig them out of the ground before they're you know ever touched by frost or cold uh, then they are fairly adaptable as a house plant. So I have tried them one year. Last winter, I tried these as a house plant, not knowing really anything about the plant. I had only had them for a few months. I mean, I planted them in our garden, like mid to late part of the summer. And so I was just kind of like, oh, I don't really know what I'm doing, but I'm gonna dig them up and try them anyway. I pl placed them on a really pretty cupboard in our great room, which was not the right, it was not the right move because even though some of these varieties can handle quite a bit of shade inside, plants typically want a fairly bright spot. They do the best in a bright spot. This spot doesn't, didn't get any direct light at all. And then I also had it in the room where our wood stove is, which, you know, for a plant that wants higher humidity levels that can really dry them out and stress them out. And I wasn't watering them enough. Um, and that's kind of the difference between a poinsettia and a caladium. So caladium, you get this beautiful Christmas vibe, just like with the poinsettia, but poinsettias are really finicky for water. I don't know about you guys, like some years I do great with them. Some years it's a little bit hit and miss. They like to dry out a little bit, but not too much. If you give them too much water, their leaves yellow and start to drop off. And I feel like, especially for a beginner gardener, this would be a really good alternative because these like to be moist all the time. And I feel like a beginner gardener especially, 
um, tends to want to over love plants and give them a little bit too much water this one can handle that and it actually prefers it and then when we go past christmas time you know usually poinsettias we're treating as a holiday plant so we kind of move on usually from our poinsettias these you can just keep as a house plant they can take you right through valentine's day with their nice color um, kind of range and then you can just keep them until it's warm enough to pop them back outside in terms of like comparing these like the care of these to your regular house plants that you're maybe watering on an every seven to 10 to 14 day basis. These definitely will need a little bit more hands-on care in terms of keeping them watered. But other than that, I feel like pretty easy. So today what I'm gonna do, I'll show you all the varieties here, but I'm going to be placing them around in our house and this still is gonna be a trial year for me. Um, I'm going to put them in different spots, see how they do. We're not heating with wood near as much because we had to replace our furnace last year. So our house is heating more efficiently like normally now. We don't have to burn as much wood. Um, but I'm excited to see how they do in different locations to see my success level and then hopefully be able to impart whatever I learn from this process to you guys. And if you get in your hands on any, if you see caladiums anywhere, I would love to know your experience with them if you decide to give it a try. Um, so first off let's go through the varieties i like how they package these like a poinsettia right here with the foil if you ever pick up a plant with a foil like this and you want to keep it in this for the holidays make sure to take like a razor blade or something and make a couple slits in the bottom because oftentimes they don't have any drains and even though the caladiums want to stay moist they don't want to be a bog plant they don't want to be sitting in water that's not good for them so make sure to do that um, but there are a couple other ways that you can pot them which May as well just like talk about it right now <laughs> on the subject. So I brought this pot out. You can use just a decorative pot like this one right here and you can just pop your caladium down in. So if I take this off, the foil off, and just pop this pot, which I may need to cut the top off of it a little bit. Yeah, see how that kind of just slides right down in that decorative pot? And then you can go in with some moss and just kind of top dress so you don't see the plastic uh, pot there. And that way you don't actually have to pot it um, and it wouldn't hurt the plant at all to do it that way. Or you can pot them natural or normally in another container that's really pretty with regular potting soil. I'm gonna do that with some of mine and I'll be using the Espoma organic potting soil. So we'll do that in a minute. Okay, so now we get to show and tell these varieties, which is the fun part. So like I said, I think I said this one's called Fast Flash and it's got a big, beautiful, bold leaf, really dark colored stems. So if you take a look down here, you can see like dark pinkish red stems. And I feel like this one out of all of them has the strongest Christmas vibe because it's got so much red in it. And then the deep green around the outside and then just like the faintest little bit of spotting that's a, kind of a salmon color. Next, we have one called Radiance. And this is a cool one. Like if you really take the time to study these leaves, there's just so much going on here. I like the dark green margin that it's kind of solid. And then the veining, when you start from the outside going in, the veining is green and then it turns to like pink and then a red in the center. So you got a, a lot of variation. And some of these like the uh, fast flash, it, they look really good in a lighter colored room because they really contrast. And this next one, called white wonder i have a lot of dark colored walls in my house i like dark cozy colors the white wonder is beautiful because it contrasts those dark colors so wonderfully this is a variety we planted underneath our mulberry tree this year with lemon coral sedum in front of it and even though you would think caladiums want to be wet sedum wants to kind of be dry they did fantastic together in fact our water got stuck on for how many days like the drip was running for like a week? Like two weeks. Like two week. weeks. Solid water to all of these plants. We didn't realize it because we had just kind of had a new thing put in over there. And the plants, like it, you didn't even know, even with the sedum, you couldn't even tell that anything had gone wrong, but they all really bulked up and they were really beautiful. And they really did show because of that bright white color. Um, in my landscape, the Chinook and the White Wonders were definitely my favorite. They really go well with all my other plants. This one is called Mesmerized. I had never seen this one in person until yesterday. And it is really beautiful. I like the subtlety of the color. This one isn't quite as full. I mean, there's a ton of little leaves coming up, which will broaden out. So I just need to give this one a bit more time. Um, but can you imagine when this one's all full of these great big leaves like this? And we've got like kind of a dark salmon to pink color with the green margin. And I like the splotchiness, like right down the middle. 
It's really interesting looking. This one is called Scarlet Flame. It has a deeper red, like almost like a burgundy-ish color, like as opposed to the Fast Flash, which really does have kind of like that true red color. Um, there are a lot of burgundy red Christmas decorations. So if that like falls within your color scheme, this would be a really pretty one. Um, I think this is gonna be really pretty maybe near some of my nutcrackers because I've got so many different variations of colors going on in those. But you've got the deep green margin, again, the deep kind of reddish burgundy veins, and then the salmony pink there in the leaves. And of course the darker stems. I think most all of these have really pretty colored stems. And then this one right here is called Dawn to Dusk. I planted this along the west side of our house and I'm not even sure that I got any pictures of it or anything. It was one of those things, it was like late in the evening and I decided, oh, I need to get those planted and then never really followed up with any photography or anything. So they did really well, just like all my other ones. But this is another one that really, like I think this was the very first one I thought this one really looks like, almost like a vintage Christmas movie. <laughs> Is that weird to equate a plant to a vintage Christmas movie? I don't know. Anyway, or old, well, how, how would you say that? Like an old timey, not a movie, like a vintage Christmas ornament. Oh. Not a vintage movie, right? That's not know. how you, anyway. <laughs> anyway, you've got kind of a little bit of a lighter green margin there and then the red and white uh, in the center. And this one is the only one I think that has like, actually, well, no, the Mesmerize has green stems as well. So we've got two that have lighter colored stems. Anyway, they're all just so pretty. Um, so I need to go gather up some containers. I'll do some repotting. I've got one pot up here, so I'll go ahead and repot one really quick. In fact, Erin, do you wanna put that pot up on the table for me? It's heavy. Sure. So this is a capital planter from Unique Stone that's absolutely gorgeous. You can tell I've had it for a while. I should have probably cleaned it out a little bit better. Um, and then this is the potting soil I'm using, the Espoma Organic regular potting soil. I don't think I need an awful lot. Let's see, which one am I planting in here? I can't remember. I think I could put in any one of these. A Little bit of soil at the bottom. Yeah, it's probably plenty. I'm gonna need a little bit more soil and some moss. I forgot moss. I'll put moss in it when we go back inside. Um, so that's basically how you do your repot. Just use regular potting soil, pick an appropriate size pot for the size of plant you have, and then go from there. Um, so I'm going to be potting some of mine up in my own containers, and then I'm also going to be using some decorative. I've got like some birch wood kind of looking um, decorative things I can slide some of these pots down in and then we'll go place them around and the sun is coming out all right so let's go place these around inside guys, I got a few of these placed around in our great room. I think it looks really pretty right here. I mean, the light is perfect. All the different colors are really beautiful in this spot right next to our big tree. Um, and I'm just really excited to see how these do. This is like shot 2.0. So we'll see how I do with these this year. I know that I just need to water them a lot more than I did before. I've got them in much more light. And of course, we won't be burning as many wood fires this year, so we should do better. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this video and we will see you in the next one. Bye.